Now let's look at information gain in practice because it's actually even though it may be or appear to be abstract it's actually very uh, practical. To do so we're going to look at a famous problem. The problem originally asked for all the characteristics between these drawings of eastbound trains and these drawings of westbound trains. But we're going to simplify the question and simply say can we distinguish via characteristic the eastbound trains from the westbound trains? And given that simpler question the answer is yes and in fact it's not really all that difficult. All we have to do is look at the shape of the second car. For eastbound we have a slope top as the second car back from the engine. For westbound we have an open rectangle as the second car back. Likewise we have an open trapezoid as the second car back and a U-shaped as the second car back for the westbound. And notice that slope top open trap occur only for eastbound and open rectangle U-shaped only for westbound. Once again slope top open trap hexagon only for eastbound open rectangle u-shaped only for westbound double open rectangle closed rectangle over here we have jagged top and open rectangle and so we see that there is no overlap between shapes of the second car for eastbound trains and shapes for westbound trains can we do this with a decision tree well, let's see if we can and see how it would work. So this is the actual data. Now we actually have data for all the cars, uh, but we're only going to look at the data for the first two cars because that's we know only thing we really need to focus on. How would we know, or how would a computer know, which of these factors to choose and how to assign directions, or how to assign conditions that would separate the different directions from each other. So the key here is that we're going to choose a factor and we're going to choose a condition on that factor such that all the eastbound are on the true side and all the westbound are on the false side. And so this is actually a small decision tree. A condition on a factor is either false uh, and that should apply all westbound or true and all eastbound. Now we're looking at very simple cases. It's actually very rare that this kind of separation occurs, this complete separation. But we'll do the best we can. Now some notation. We're going to be denoting positives by plus and negatives by minus. So for us east will be positive and west will be negative. So if a classifier groups P of the plus with Q of the minus then we write that as Q minus P plus. And what a decision node does is it splits or partitions a set of observation into two labeled groups. So a Q minus P plus on the false side, S minus R plus on the true side. So a condition splits the outcomes into these different classifications. So let's take a look. So if we have wheels 1 is greater than 2, this is a condition in the, for the first column. And we notice that there's only one uh, car, uh, first car, that has more than two wheels. And it's westbound, so it's a minus. And so we get this breakdown of 4 of the westbound and 5 of the eastbound have two wheels and one westbound has three wheels and no westbounds have three or more wheels. So let's look at the shape of the first car. So if we look at the shape of one as open rectangle then we can see that it's only true for two of the eastbound trains and all the other first cars are not open rectangles. So if we look at shape two Notice the second cars of the eastbound and westbound trains, they're all different. So if we could get some condition for which uh, we completely separate so that all the falses 
give us the westbound and all the trues give us the eastbound, then we'll have a, a nice classifier. But the condition is going to be a little hard to come up with, so we're going to look first at a simplified version where the condition is obvious. And so the simplified Mikowski is where each of the eastbound trains has a closed rectangle second uh, car. So notice that shape 2 is closed rectangle for all the eastbound and none of the westbound. So shape 2 equals closed rectangle gives us 5 on the true uh, for the plus and 5 minus on the false. So if we can show that this gives us a higher information gain than any of the other choices, then we'll have shown that this is the best means of classifying eastbound versus westbound. So information gain uh, you remember we've already talked about it, but let's talk now about how we actually do it in practice. So there are five of each, so we'll say P plus and P minus are one half, five out of ten. And if Y is associated with the target class, in this case Y is direction, eastbound or westbound, then uh, H of Y is one bit because both P plus and P minus are a half. We'll see some examples in just a moment. Now if we have a condition on a selected factor, we're going to calculate the specific conditional entropy uh, given that the condition of x is true and then that x is false. And then we'll look at the expected entropy in y given this condition. And we'll subtract that from the original and that'll give us our information gain. So here we go. Keep in mind that h of y is equal to 1. So P sub T plus and P sub T minus are the probabilities, uh, well, relative frequencies of the true set. PF plus and PF minus are the relative frequencies of the false sets. So for wheels 1 greater than 2, we have 4 minus 5 plus on the false and 1 minus 0 plus on the true. So true has only one train, so therefore P of T plus is 0 and P of T minus is 1. In contrast, there are nine total trains that are false for the condition wheels one greater than two, and four of those are minus and five are plus, so P of F plus is five ninths and P of F minus is four ninths. So now let's calculate these conditional entropies. So there we have our formula for entropy. So the negative probability log base 2 of probability uh, and add those up and notice we get a negative 0 log 2 and either calculus will we can use it uh, limit to show that this is true or we just define entropy to ignore 0 probabilities uh, either one will make that 0 and so the entropy for wheels 1 greater than true equals true uh, is 0 for wheels 1 greater than 2 is false, we use the F plus and F minus probabilities. And remember, PF plus was 5 nights and PF minus was 4 nights. And so we get negative 5 nights log 2, so on and so forth, and that's 0 0.991. Now, there is a 1 in 10 chance of going to the true side of this condition. So P sub T is one tenth and P sub F is nine tenths. And so therefore we'll get that H of Y wheels one greater than two is uh, 0 0.891 bits. Now let me review in case you missed that. So we have the one tenth times the true, the nine tenths times the false, and that gives us the 0 0.892 and we subtract that from 1 to get our information gain which is 0 0.108 bits. Now let's look at length to uh, condition being short. So we have 2 minus 1 plus on the false side of length 2 equals short and 3 minus 4 plus on the true side. 
So that gives us these probabilities. Remember again, we're looking at the total number and getting the PF probabilities by taking the individual uh, numbers over the total on the false side. And the same thing for the piece of T's. And we use those down here to calculate these entropies. And then we notice that there are uh, seven on the true and three on the false. So that's a PF of three tenths and a probability of going to the true side of seven tenths. You see those numbers here, seven tenths, three tenths. And so that gives us our entropy for the length to equal short condition. The specific entropy is 0 0.965 bits. The information gain is 0 0.035. And of course, remember here that there are 10 total trains. Shape 1 equals open rectangle. So we have shape 1 equals open rectangle being true is 0 bits because the probabilities are 0 and 1. Why? Because the true condition has a 2 and a 0. So everything is true. So the probability of true is 1. The probability of false is 0. I'm sorry, the probability of plus is 1, the probability of minus is 0 on the true side of the shape 1 equals open rectangle condition. So we do that, we get 0 0.954. Remembering again how we compute our PF and plus and PF minus, and there again is our PT plus and PT minus. Put all this together, and we get. 0 0.764 bits for shape 1 equals open rectangle and that gives us an information gain of 0 0.236 bits. So again this is where we get these numbers the 0 0.8 from here and the 0 0.2 from there. Now let's look at shape 2 equals closed rectangle and you'll notice this splits completely the uh, classes uh, from each other. So our probabilities are all either 1 or 0, and of course the probability of going to the left or the right is a half. So therefore we get the specific entropy for true and the specific entropy for false are both 0. So the specific entropy for being a closed rectangle, that condition is 0, and the information gain is 1 bit. And of course this is more than the information gain we saw before. Now let's look at this qualitatively. So the information gain e equals one bit for the shape two equals closed rectangle condition, that has to be maximal. So we can prove a theorem or just common sense. The uh, entropy of y has to be greater than the entropy of y given the condition x. So therefore the information gain at most can be the entropy in y uh, itself. So a zero entropy, that's as uh, little entropy as we can get, so we have total dependence here. Uh, and what does that mean? That means after we make the decision that condition shape 2 equals closed rectangle, after that condition is applied, there's no new information that we can obtain, and thus it's the largest information gain. So in summary, decisions are outcomes of conditions. Information gain measures performances, but does not imply the conditions themselves. Decisions can be used as predictive models. They're intuitive, and they can be very useful, but only if we make the right decisions.